Hello, and welcome to uh, my first uh, edition of a Conversation with a Socialist on StreamYard. I am here with Delilah. Uh, she goes uh, Delilah for Texas on Twitter. And uh, you, are, you are a potential uh, Green Party uh, candidate, or have I got that wrong from our... Uh, yes, uh, I'm working with Green Party Texas. <clears throat> um, the nomination process is they vote next year. So we're just trying to get an early start on campaigning. Okay. Uh, so how long have you been wanting to um, be, a, be a candidate? I mean, uh, is, is there a particular reason why you, you wanted to run? Absolutely. Um, I've been involved with a lot of um, anti-pipeline protests lately. And um, there's a Kinder Morgan pipeline coming through the Hill Country. And I've been involved with the community efforts for environmental um, movements <clears throat> and other social movements. And at this point, it just it's very, very clear that people need to do something now in order to stop the aggression against our natural habitats. And so I just, running for office is a very complicated process. And, it's hard to find people who really want to do something like that because of all the risks involved and, you know, the extra stress. It's like working another full time job, but I'm absolutely willing to do that because I feel like right now everybody's got to do as much as they possibly can to help the situation. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, is Texas a uh, well, how much of a blue reddish thing? I, I think uh, Biden lost that by quite a few in the past. Uh, the election, um, and I know that during the primaries, um, things were kind of excluded in, uh, in Biden's favor uh, in Texas. But um, now, uh, what kind of a following does the Green Party have in Texas? Uh, I, I remember interviewing Hunter Crow uh, earlier this year, while, while me and my partner were in transition from Seattle to Ohio. Um, uh, what, what, what type of following do, does the Green Party have in Texas? We are working on getting a, a more local and loyal base um, at the moment. There were some issues. Sorry, I'm adjusting the camera. I don't know if I can't no. see. You. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it's a little weird. I'm just looking at myself talking. Looks like I'm talking to myself. Um, so presidential election, they didn't obviously get where they wanted to be. Um, but I know about 30 that actually I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, there was a, a good amount of people who voted Green Party um, this last election, a, a significant amount more than um, previous candidates in Texas. And um, so I think there's, um, we had a bunch of other local races, like we had a railroad commissioner who was Green Party and she was on the ballot. <clears throat> And as far as like Democrats and Republicans, if you look at the numbers, it'll look like it's just about split barely and Republicans, the GOP won Texas for Biden. Um, by, I don't like, I'm going to say like 15% margin or something like that. It wasn't like huge, like, you know what I mean? It's not like everybody voted um, for Trump. Um, but you know, it was close. It was close enough that they felt because Texas is a battleground state. So Democrats uh, do a lot of um, efforts in Texas. And so I think they'd be happy with the numbers. They'd be pleased with what they got. But, you know, as somebody who didn't vote for either corporate party, um, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not really invested in their um, campaigns, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, does uh, Texas have rent choice voting? We do not. And uh, is there a moment there to get that started? Yes, um, there, there are efforts being made to try and drop bills and, and talk to people about um, why right choice voting is essential. You know, uh, there's a lot of people who still are a little um, not well versed um, on the political spectrum. And so a lot of it's going to be information, giving, you know, talking to people about what ranked choice voting is and what we can do to try and get that something 
you know, get that to become a norm for Texas. But we're, we're usually the state that's behind on a lot of um, legal changes and laws. You know, I've lived here my whole life and there's always some sort of um, pushback from more conservative types to, against progress. <clears throat> uh, I, I know that uh, some Greens are still in a certain positions like water conservation, is that right? I don't know. Are you, what was the question? I said, I said, I think there are some greens that are water conservation or water districts. I mean, in Texas. Mm, yes, <clears throat> yes. There's that's there's a big focus um, on protecting our resources here. Um, you know, Elon Musk was doing uh, testing in a wildlife refuge down in the valley where I, you know, I grew up down there, um, and. There was a big pushback. A lot of the indigenous communities are trying to to get involved and and lead the way against these big corporate projects. You know, um, locally near Austin, there was a Kinder Morgan pipeline that people were working against. Um, I actually went to legal and appeals um, meeting, I guess, <laughs> and uh, it was it's crazy to to just see how much work is involved and and how much financial finances need to be invested in conservation efforts it's almost impossible at this moment we desperately need more public pressure to get these things going you know what i mean everybody that i've talked to like at my job is like oh i didn't know anything about that but if you go out to wimberley you know that's everybody's talking about that because it's so close to them and i think texas is such a big state um, people don't feel like they are involved, you know, because it's easy to, yeah. you know, you don't know what's going on in two counties over. Um, and I, I really want to try and help bring focus on these environmental issues that affect all of us uh, in our state. And I think there's going to be once um, people learn uh, a little bit more about the processes, I think they'll be more involved. And um, that's that's really what my whole what my whole deal is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you have a uh, history of activism and stuff of that nature? Uh, how long have you been with the Greens? And uh, what is your platform overall that you, that you will be running on? On what I'll be running on? Yes. The, the overall platform, what, what is like uh, the crust and the, uh, and the details within the crust? Right. Um, so obviously conservation efforts, um, that's essential. And, you know, our, our economy has struggled during this pandemic. So we definitely need um, investment in green jobs and sustainable futures. That's just, you know, the whole eco-socialist agenda is, is where you take socialism and you make sure that it's it's in line with um, conservation because that is being in line with, you know, all progressive platforms, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, Medicare for all, I work in healthcare and one of the biggest focuses for me personally is, is advocating for people to have that right to exist that is being denied um, from lack of healthcare mm -hmm. coverage. I, I've seen it too many times where people are being left um, destitute basically because of lack of health care. So that's the other thing that I'm very concerned with. And then um, independent rights. Texas has that independent spirit. And, um, you know, that's why I my uh, quote is why secede when we can lead because I want to take that independent spirit and I want to use that to make to help Texas be an independent self sustaining Sustaining state that can, you know, take care of its own people. We shouldn't be. I mean, I'm Hispanic and I'm Indigenous, and my like my relatives weren't legal when they came here, and they've always been hard workers, you know. And just to see like this this stigma against immigration and people of color is really painful. It, it, these issues have been going on for decades upon decades, hundreds of years, and I'm telling you something about it. Yeah, 
I, I, I know the feeling. Um, uh, what, what is your background in that case? My background with employment or <clears throat> with activism? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I grew, I, I moved to Austin when I was like um, 10 years old, 9, 10 years old, and my parents both worked here. My mother was a government worker and my dad was a mechanic. Um, and so I've grown up in and around Austin, like I lived in Lockhart for a little bit and been all over the place. Um, and we, I've I don't know. I've just been watching a lot happen and, and it's, it's hard to be a native because things are changing so quickly around you. I started working at my current job when I was um, 19 <laughs> and uh, it, it's a, I've been with that company for 17 years now mm -hmm. um, this December. Um, I'm a surgical tech and so we help the doctors during surgery. And that's just, that's been my, you know, I did a, a lot of smaller other type of customer service jobs, but this has been my career um, for the last, you know, 17 years or so. And the last probably at least 10, 12 years, I've been involved locally with um, environmental efforts and things like that. I did the March for Monsanto, March against Monsanto. Um, that, that was kind of, um, one of my introductions. I did some protests with the Occupy movement. Um, I was involved with um, a local campaign against um, poaching and ivory trade. Uh, you know, legislation issues whenever they need people to help uh, show support for bills and things like that against animal cruelty. Um, you know, my family and I, we go, we show up. <laughs> Uh, we mm. do what we can, you know. <clears throat> so, of course, we did go to Black Lives Matter marches as well. But um, that this year was different, <laughs> being a being involved yeah. in direct action. Uh, now, now, does that does your occupation mean that you're a, a frontline worker? Yes. Uh, and uh, can you tell me of what hospital you, you uh, work at? I, I don't want to talk about that because I can't try and say that my views are shared by my employer. Oh, I understand. So, um, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I still get full time, Calvin. <laughs> I still have got to work full time, Calvin. Yeah. Uh, what it, what is the uh, the effective COVID uh, rate there right now? <sighs> I'm going to tell you right now. I can't look at the numbers. <laughs> Every because they they the cases are not they're not hitting they're not flattening at all and it's just very frustrating because we've got a lot of anti maskers and people who are saying things that like they don't believe that you know COVID is real still and it's it's just a bit too frustrating for me to to focus on the daily numbers um, you know. Every hospital in town has, you know, good standards of uh, procedures regarding infection control, obviously, but it, it's more like a society thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. I, there hasn't been a day that people haven't been trying to go to bars still and, and go out and have fun, you know, yeah. since things started. Yeah. Um, how, how different is the uh, government statistics with, with, uh, with the ones that you can look at regard to? Uh, how, how is there a is there a percentage difference or are they about the same? Well, we're Texas is a leading state in cases and has con, has been that way since the beginning. We we've always had high numbers. Yeah, we're like I, there hasn't been a time from where I don't think Texas wasn't a hot spot. <laughs> mm. You know, uh, one of the first cases to come to the U.S. was actually in Texas at, at one of the bases because they were they were bringing that. everybody from um, over, you know, not stateside. Um, as soon as the pandemic hit, they were bringing everybody back. <clears throat> and so one of the first confirmed cases was in San Antonio, <laughs> which isn't far from here. Yeah, and now, oh, what's his name? Um, 
the guy that went for president, uh, York, was it York? A work or some other, uh, uh, oh, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, Beto O'Rourke, you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. I, I apologize. Yes, that, 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 that's the guy. Uh, uh, do you know if he's been doing anything to uh, help out in regards to just the overall community, or has he just kind of been out? Yeah, I actually haven't seen him doing a lot of um, community efforts. I used to, um, I did vote for him back when he was running for against Ted Cruz. Um, and so I signed up for emails from his campaign and a lot of the emails that I had read were, you know, just focusing on supporting Biden and the Democratic Party. And um, they're, they're, they, they started their own um, PAC. So there was a lot of um, push to support that as well. And, you know, I'm for a, like, I'm just a person. <laughs> I'm just a voter, you know what I'm saying? And I, I haven't seen or heard that he's been out in the community doing things to, to help with this pandemic. Um, personally, I haven't seen it. <clears throat> uh, how about Ted Cruz? Anybody that is like currently in, uh, in office, uh, have they been doing anything in regards to helping? Any legislation? I, not not from Texas. You know, um, our mayor in Austin, Steve Adler, is he's a Democrat, and he he talks about you know believing the science, and he tries to give community updates and things like that, and um, enforce mask mandates. Um, but then our governor Abbott is is very much seeming to be on the fence. Um, you know about concerns for the cases he's he's pushing you know support for small businesses but then trying to not put, like he doesn't want to put the, the state on lockdown again um mm. well I, you, I know we talked about the support uh what would you change uh if you were in charge for Texas, any, currently? Uh, any, any policies that you would back, any policies you may have uh, on your mind that if you were to get the job, you would uh, try to get a vote for us of any time. Is there anything that is kind of like uh, in your uh, gun barrel, as it were, uh, that you want to uh, go with? Um, sorry, you, I, you were breaking up just a bit. I think I understand the gist of what you're asking. Um, <clears throat> so, one of the biggest issues is a lot of small businesses have just gone under um, from, you know, lack of sales and things like that. And because they're small, they don't, they're not able to um, qualify for bankruptcy. So, you know, it's kind of like they just disappear and they're not um, represented or heard from. And so I would push for UBI um, for the duration of, the pandemic you know so that people can stay home because if your whole life is built on how much you how much income you make by sales specifically you know a lot of independent contractors and small business owners those types they have not been well supported during this at all so i a ubi would have been essential to keep everybody safe and you know and whole um, so I would have definitely pushed for that, and I would have been a little bit more firm on the mask mandates um, and community gatherings because um, because constituents pushed back so hard against the mask mandates and the shutdown of the um, the state. I think it influenced um, our elected officials' decisions to not support, you know, um, the lockdown as long as we could have, you know. So. Um, I understand you have to do what the people want you to do, but you also have to put their safety first, you know? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is the, uh, the amount that you would push, push for? Um, I, it would be hard to say. Um, cause you think about $2,000 a month and it, it doesn't actually feel, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's enough. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't enough to support the people you know what i'm saying i know um bernie pushed for it was like four thousand a month of unemployment and that seemed to make a 
big difference. So there's got to be a sweet spot in between those numbers um, to help people and support them, you know. Yeah. And obviously the money you give to people goes right back to the economy on necessities, you know. It's like it's a disingenuous statement to think that people who need money during a pandemic are lazy or they don't work hard or they're taking advantage of the system. They live, you know what I mean? They live here, they work here. There are people. We have to do everything to support yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and actually those that, that have said that, uh, they get some payoffs from big corporations, uh, big pharma, people like that. Uh, that's the reason why they, support, that's why they don't support a UBI or anything of that nature because it takes money away from whatever tax incentives they give to the donors. Um, right. Where are you on uh, legalizing marijuana? Oh my God, we are so behind. We need to just legalize recreational marijuana. I, I'm <laughs> this discussion is so old. <laughs> I know plenty of veterans and plenty of people with mental health issues that that would benefit from just legalizing it and using it for recreational purposes. And um, you know, it would actually help with uh, addictions, other addictions that are more harmful to people if, if they would just go ahead and legalize it. I, I have no debate there. <laughs> well, uh, have you heard of that, that the Moore's Act got passed by the, I think it's the U.S. Senate, but I, no, US, the House, I'm sorry, the House. But I, I don't think it'll pass the Senate. Uh, have you heard about the Moore's Act? Uh, no, I have not heard about it. Uh, the last, uh, my my fiance is very much in tune with that community. Uh, uh, she told me earlier that um, it basically it takes uh, marijuana off of the Schedule One drug uh, list, making it uh, federally legally to, legal not only to manufacture and those and basically uh, you, uh, bank bank with it and all that stuff. So, uh, so uh, it sounds like that you'd be with that if, uh, say, you got into office and that was uh, that went on your desk, and as far as uh, your your vote for approval. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. People are sitting in jail for nonviolent offenses related to marijuana. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> These people could be out in our communities, you know, helping, helping living existing you know what i mean like we we want people to be free yeah. <laughs> um, so i i, I don't agree with um criminalizing people for um something so i mean yeah we've got to do a lot with the drug classes um there's a lot of issues and i don't you know, I, I think it's really sad to think about somebody being in jail for decades for something like that, like a mer like a possession issue, um, and they have harsher consequences than somebody who would be charged for assault. Um, there's a, a a group in San Marcos, and they're called Mano Amiga, and they do a lot of police reform efforts um, and things like that. And so I. I try to keep in touch with them about what bills are coming up and what they're working on. Recently, they pushed um, Hayes County to go uh, with site and release um, legislation. So to keep people out of jail, you know, we've got a lot of numbers of COVID cases um, and we've got a lot of numbers that are in the jails and those people are not violent people and they're getting very sick. And it's been a concern, you know, for um, a lot of advocates of the situation that they're in. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you support uh, defunding of the police, or at least uh, maybe coming up with like a uh, financial council to make sure that whatever money does go towards the police is not for, say, up to you know, like military uh, military style weapons, but more or less like yes. making sure that money is going for like the staff and. Uh, maybe upgrades in like, cars and stuff of that nature, but not military, not military style weapons or military style vehicles. Absolutely, our the police funds, uh, the police budgets are over um, overfunded, and um, in Austin, with the Black Lives Matter movement and defunding of the police, it kind of went hand in hand um, over the course of the summer. People were out every day. You know, we actually lost people um as a result of that and uh 
you know, police brutality, I've witnessed it firsthand. Their, their budgets go, <laughs> their inflated budgets go along with inflated egos, in my opinion. And so when you take, and then all the movement kind of slowed down and tapered off after Austin decided to, they said they would defund, but there's such lack of oversight. We don't know where those funds are going. Yeah. And um, you know what I'm saying? There's not really any concessions being done. I haven't seen anything to dictate that the money's going to be used better for like mental health services. And um, I think I think they did make sure that there was going to be some money going to forensics. But, you know, like victim services and things like that are all underfunded. And there needs to be better oversight in the department's, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, there needs to be better oversight. Yeah, uh, better scrutiny. Uh, I, I may be a, a good term as well. Uh, where are you yeah. as far as like uh, council rent or uh, or um, oh, rent control? Oh, yeah. Um, have you ever been to Texas? <laughs> uh, I was there uh, in the early 2000s, uh, but it was for more of a late, uh, a uh, transfer from plane to plane. One, when they say it's in bigger taxes, yes, that's true, but that's in guns, not, not necessarily people. I did see uh, <laughs> small, like, and the army guards uh, at like the part where you get onto the plane and have guns almost as big as they are, if not maybe a little bit bigger. That's pretty much the only... I can be shocking for, for people coming through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. But, you know, when you live here and you're kind of, you, you know, there's like at least 15 other people that I know that own, um, you know, those those type of AR uh, um, social behavior here. Um, so what were, what were you were asking about Texas, like local races or what was, I'm well, sorry. I, I, no, no problem. I was asking you what your opinion is. Uh, rent control and counseling rent. Yes. Um, so we had some mandates um, in the bigger cities to, they're like a, a rent memorandums. I don't even know. I'm sorry. I'm terrible at this. Anyway, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, anyway, they, they, they did some statutes to make sure that people could not be evicted. And, um, and a lot of, advocates said that that really wasn't enough you know what i'm saying because how is that beneficial if they're just accruing debt the whole time you know what i mean so um i do support um you know halting mortgage and rent payments but i think that also goes hand in hand with the uh, universal bacon basic income um you know what i'm saying i, I would have at least like to see them you know slash the cost of rent for people who were able to pay you know what i'm saying like there's just there, there wasn't enough effort um to support people it, it was like the community had to lead every single effort and uh canceling the rent wasn't canceling it it was just saying you can't evict them so i i would have definitely liked to see something um more in depth to support families through this hard times every time i hear about a family getting evicted, it just breaks my heart. I can't, I can't understand how it's acceptable for our police to pick a family out on the street for not being able to pay rent during a pandemic when, you know, everybody's losing their jobs. It's just really heartbreaking and terrible. I don't, um, you know, I know there's a lot of steps involved, but it shouldn't be that hard to take care of people, especially when the people you know, we generate a lot of income in Texas. We're not um, low um, as far as uh, labor, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. there should, yeah, there a hundred percent would have canceled rent and um, done everything I possibly could to make sure that people were well supported during this so they could stay healthy. Exactly, yeah. Uh, have you uh, been in contact with uh, other part-time members to see if they're going to run or is that going to help you get started and help promote you and all that stuff? Other members of, of where? Green Party, Social Alternative, 
basically, is there like a collective effort to help bring prior any leftist or social candidates in Texas? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, bill, there's a lot of petitions and things going around to to support um, canceling the rent, and there was a lot. There was honestly over the fall with the presidential election, a lot of the local issues have been kind of taken a backseat because they've been consolidating uh, people power to you know support the Democrats, and I really feel that we kind of left people in a bit of a lurch uh, recently. Um, I haven't seen a lot of concentrated efforts to, to work against canceling rent and work work for, you know, UBI and things like that. Right. So clearly trying to organize, um, you know, at this stage, I'm just trying to get a chapter running in Hayes County. And, um, you know, it's about to be the holidays and people want to still focus on, on Christmas and um, you know, what I would really love to see is more charity from the community mm. for these efforts. Yeah. Uh, well, do you know, there are, there are, uh, other grand parties, uh, grand party members that are, that are wanting at least to, uh, go for it? Um, no, not that I know of right now. I think everybody's just um, picking up pieces after the presidential election and waiting for inauguration. Um, it definitely feels like things are a bit at a standstill right now. So um, that's why I'm trying to organize. Um, I don't want, one of the most gratifying experiences is direct action and, and knowing that things that you've done um, have been used to help mm. movements. So if I, I, I'm very much trying to get more involved with the community and get the community more involved with these um, these things, you know, that will benefit them. Nice. Uh, so, uh, who is uh, there's sorry, Calvin. There's a few little glitches. Um, yeah. I, I'm not sure. That, well, it sounds like a little bit of feedback from your microphone. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's my end or your end, but uh, you say, you sound like you're kind of going in and out. But uh, at least on my on my part, but apparently uh, you sound clearer to someone else, and uh, background noise somewhere. I'm uh, definitely. Oh no! Oh okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. I mean, uh, 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 do I sound the whole? Yes, I can hear you. There's just some like scratching sounds um, <clears throat> that kind of uh, cover up some of your right, words. Yeah, so I'm how sorry. Yeah, I, I, I would. Uh, Most of the time we can hear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, who is the uh, the person you're trying to unseat? Greg Abbott. Oh, um, I do need to clarify. I don't feel comfortable using that term unseat. Um, I don't know if, if this is public information, but our current governor is in a wheelchair. So I don't want to, I don't uh, want to be taken out of context. Words, <laughs> words, uh, uh, bad but choice yes, of words on my part. Uh, who, are, who are you trying to defeat in the election? There we go. That's probably a better term. Correct. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Greg Abbott is his name. <laughs> and uh, what uh, what has he done that has not been satisfactory and that requires uh, a uh, opponent? How much time do you have? <laughs> we have an hour, actually. We, we have it is, it's a, a lot. Uh, we we have we have a full hour. Uh, uh, yeah, so another 20, 26 minutes. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> so many things, actually. Uh, you know, not, there they tried to cut. There's this program in Texas called CHIP, and it's it's insurance for um, low income families, children specifically, only children, and they they were talking about cutting you know, the budget for that, <laughs> like a year ago, and everybody was like, what is wrong with you guys? You can't, if you can't, if you don't stay on top of what they're doing all the time, 
so many bad bills and things get pushed through. I just, he, there's a definite um, disconnect from these um, types of politicians and the actual constituents. I mean, I don't know a single person that has anything positive to say about Governor Abbott. You know, he was just involved with some scandal regarding Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Patrick, I mean, taking funds, using them improperly, uh, so many things. I could just write a whole article, and I might have to, about the things that he's done that have not um, been satisfactory for residents here. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid to get into it. I'm afraid to actually get into it. Actually, uh, whatever you want to say in regards to uh, what he's done wrong, you... Uh, that requires a uh, opponent uh, 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 against him. Um, it might be good as far as the information uh, about you out and what, what you're willing to do, and then that's what this interview is about. Right. right. Um, um, instead of me focusing on him and the things that he could be doing better, I I would rather focus on the things that I can do. Representation is important. Um, and I think that when you have a working class candidate running and you have somebody who is experienced being, you know, a hard laborer for years, you're going to just already see a change in the way things are handled. Because... I have the experience I've had to work hard, you know what I'm saying, physically and, and years and years or be locked in some form of stagnant wages. I, I am very familiar with that. And so all I hope to do is, is accomplish with this campaign is to motivate people to demand better for themselves because we're we're being stuck in these class systems people are feeling defeated like they can't do anything for themselves and they can't change um you know their future and I, that's very sad for me and i i work with a lot of people who don't have any representation who don't have people that listen to them who don't feel like anybody's trying to fight for their needs and that's all i want to do <laughs> that's all i want to do and i think when you um when you elect people who have this real life experience you'll see you know positive change happening right no no that's very true um in your position how many times has uh, your wage gone up my my pay Yes. Um, so, God, when I started, I think I made like forty thousand dollars a year, um, and so it's it's not as, as aggressive pay raises as probably I would like, but it's been enough to try and kind of compensate for the cost of living and um, you know, cost of healthcare and things like that. Uh, what, what, what a lot of the, people, I mean, are, are what, what is mm -hmm. the cost of healthcare in Texas right now? I mean, as far as like the, like the doctor's appointment, that sort of thing. So, you know, that, that's one of the big issues is that, um, depending on who's the provider, depending on what network you use and where you go and who treats what, there's huge differences in cost of healthcare. Um, you know, ambulance rides could be upward, you know, close to $10,000 or more difference in cost. So it really has a lot to do with the private insurance companies who operate around here. Um, so it, it's, it's, Texas is one of the largest uninsured and underinsured states um, in the nation. So if that's an indication for you <laughs> to um, how exorbitant the prices are uh, a lot what, of people out of it yes. <clears throat> what was that last part I'm sorry I got the guy interrupt you no it's okay um, a lot of people just opt out of coverage a lot of people are just don't have coverage they can't afford it um, so they don't they don't you know they don't get coverage 
Yeah. Uh, uh, why, what, what is the, uh, the predominant uh, insurance companies in uh, Texas right now? Um, I would have to look. Um, I'll, there's a lot of uh, government workers in Texas, so I would imagine there's a pretty big amount of um, people who are signed up for those those plans. We're a very diverse state, too, so it, it, I I wouldn't I would have to do some extensive research regarding um, the types of coverage um, offered here. But you know, obviously, one of the biggest um, facts that, that we know about Texas is that, you know, it's underinsured and uninsured. So it's, it's you know, I, the private insurance companies are the ones dictating the costs of, um, you know, visits and, and um, things associated with healthcare, healthcare costs, but there's not enough legislation to cap that and, um, you know, kind of make it fair across the board. Hmm. Uh, what uh, do you think the move for all at a community uh, a community um, rate uh, would be beneficial or detriment, detrimental uh, to hospitals and insurance companies and people in general? And do that I don't <laughs> see it being detrimental to profit. What's that? I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Uh, you cut off and there was, and there was background noise. If it um, normalize or um, yeah, I don't I don't see it being detrimental to profits or profit margins for healthcare at all. I don't. There's um, plenty of money going around, and I, it would be nice if just some of these. Um, high income earners would be willing to cooperate with, you know, lowering their salaries so that their staff could get paid better and the insurance companies, um, you know, not being able, like there's, there's things they can't charge over, you know, but that's rare. Like they're going to be, I don't even know how to answer this question properly. I don't, don't see it being a problem. There's plenty of way for nonprofits to make money, so there's plenty of way for nonprofit hospitals to make money yeah. and still pay their staff. You know. Uh, so going back to the uh, legislation that you would want to see uh, implemented, uh, what policies would you want to see implemented uh, as opposed to uh, gun control, uh, Medicare for all, which it sounds like you're for. Uh, what kind of a, uh, uh, are, are you for a $15 minimum wage or more like say 28 or $30 minimum wage? Um, um, I think 20 definitely is where I'm at mental. I think $20 an hour would, would do a great amount of good for people in Texas, especially those workers who are stuck in low income earning jobs, you know, and, and minimum wage jobs. Our minimum wage is still 725. Um, a lot of, companies will try to start people off at like ten dollars an hour and that's still far below um any f form of sustainable pay so um, i would definitely advocate for twenty dollars an hour at least <clears throat> uh what would you uh as far as um uh, oh what is it, um as far as people living in the united states uh quote unquote illegally uh how would you uh like either protect them what policies would you uh, vote for to either make them legal or make it not illegal for them to uh to be employed and to help get whatever wages they may be earning now which is below possible po poverty uh to livable so first thing um i think ice needs to go away and i think abolishing ice would be um the right move first for texas um, and then just, just, there's a lot of immigration reform policies that would be beneficial. You know, we want people to be healthy and happy here and, and to be part of our community and anybody, I mean, a lot of these, these families just, um, and even single people are just coming here for better opportunity to work, even 
even our low minimum wage of 725 would be an improvement for them, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things that would make a difference would be abolishing ICE and making sure that these companies aren't able to profit off of these people suffering anymore. So that would be uh, Walmart, that would be Amazon and other places and other companies like that, right? Uh, as far as immigration, what was that? How do you mean? Oh, so we were talking about immigration, um, and uh, I said that uh, abolishing ICE would be the right move. Um, and then you mentioned the larger companies like conglomerates, like Amazon and Walmart. Yeah. Um, yeah. What What is the question about them? No, uh, I I I think they use a um, a uh, immigration status to hire the workers that uh, they can that they can control the wages if i if if i heard that right and at some point i heard something to that effect that was like um immigration card related uh they yeah i i'm not really sure i'm not really sure how they control that part really but uh would you protect uh the immigrants that do work for companies like that with like you know uh, with the with the daca or anything similar to that Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of advocacy groups in Texas um, who who work con constantly um, for labor rights, especially regarding um, immigrants and and people who are here on green card status and things like that. So, I mean, definitely they need to be supported. I'm not sure if there is a correlation between these large companies specifically benefiting off of immigrants, but I wouldn't be surprised. So, um, you know, I think speeding up the processes by which people can be declared um, citizens here would be, would be the best move for them to have those labor protections that we need. Mm. Uh uh, have you been following up with what? Uh, oh, okay. You, the camera cut off. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving around. Sorry, I get a, I get a little antsy. <clears throat> no worries. Actually, no, uh, the uh, the camera went off as far as the main screen, but I could see you on the smaller screen. Oh, okay. Have, like I said, it's the first time I'm actually using this as a uh, as a the interview portion. I used it in my. Uh, my uh, my Green Party and the Socialist news uh, news uh, channel off off of this, so I do that every day. I'll be I'll be doing that, I'll be okay. doing it after I I, I have to interview with you. Um, and by the way, so far, gotcha. and so far uh, I think you're very qualified for, for the job as far as uh, your the policies you want implemented and just your background. I think sounds like you know what you're doing and know what you want in regards to policy making and all that other stuff. Um, Let's see. Uh, was there anything? There, you're welcome. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add to uh, to the topic? Um, all I want to add is that everybody who voted Green Party, um, they did the right thing. <laughs> I I think that you know we didn't clear the five percent that we wanted for um, you know ballot access, but I think just standing your ground on morals is one of the best things you could have done. And I, I definitely don't want Green Party voters to feel discouraged. Um, and I want them to, to know that there's enthusiasm in the party and there's people here who wanna represent you and help you. And, and, you know, we're not going to just come by and say, you know, give us your money and then leave and not you won't hear from us anymore. That's not what we're trying to do. We want to be an integral part of the community. We want to be there when there's social change and you need support and we want to be there to advocate for your rights. So the, the last thing I want to say is to just don't be discouraged if you're a green voter and to, to please reach out because we want to hear from you. And uh, sounds good. Uh, and uh, where can people reach you to once you become an actual um, uh, candidate, uh, you already have something set up to uh, take donations. Uh, you have websites. Uh, what, what is your uh, what, what is your social media um, uh, going on? So I'm working on my um, 
my campaign staff at the moment. And so we're going to be on Instagram soon. And I've got a Hayes County Facebook page um, that I'm going to link up to the um, Twitter page, Delilah for Texas. So either of those methods will be easy to get in touch with me or somebody else. And um, just reach out to your local chairs and volunteer with Green Party. And we'll, we'll add you to our list so we can get in touch with you. Okay, well, that sounds good. Uh, uh, send me some Twitter, uh, the uh, other information that I don't have that, that will put in the chat line for, for this video. Uh, this, okay. video by, this video, by the way, will, will, will go up tomorrow. It takes like 24 hours for YouTube for some reason to, to clear things and let it go up. But mm -hmm. there'll, be a part, there'll be a part one and part two of this on my anchor.fm slash combo and socialism. So just in case, you know, people can't wait in regards to the first part, uh, they'll have yep. access to that. Uh, and I'll send that to you, of course. Um, Great. I, I'd like to thank you for being on the uh, the first uh, stream yard uh, conversation with a socialist. Uh, I thank you for attending that one, and I hope uh, I hope we could do this again. And I hope yeah, that thank you so much. Well, and I hope that uh, both of us can get more detail as far as uh, what, how, how, how your platform is going to form and other things of that nature and, you know, just kind of that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to be back. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. I hope you have a good weekend, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, a different time. Okay. Thanks, Calvin. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, uh, at Delilah for uh, Texas. Um, I thank you guys for watching and now listening. Um, subscribe to this channel for more interviews as well as uh, more uh, uh, Green Party and Socialist news, which I'll be here. I'll be doing here uh, momentarily. Uh, but thanks for listening, and peace out for now.